Uh, James, a, a tough day at uh, MK Dons on, on, on Saturday and a result that no one wanted. How was the, the camp uh, heading into training on on Monday? Is it going to take a little while to, to recover from that one or everyone bounce straight in? Um, yeah, I, th I think everyone was a bit deflated because obviously the result didn't go the way that we'd hoped. Um, I actually thought we started the game well. Um, probably deserved to go one up. And then I think... Um, I think obviously the the fact that that decision was taken out of our hands to to stop the goal um, probably deflated us a little bit, and then obviously a couple of minutes later we've gone and conceded, which is probably the worst kind of reaction you want to having a disallowed goal. Um, and then I felt we kind of just floated through the game and lost a bit of purpose as the game went on. It was um, yeah, looking back on it, it was probably probably quite a poor poor performance. Um, but I think objectively you have to look at it when you come in Monday morning. You have to think maybe the last six, seven games since Oxford we probably probably put in two poor performances in Exeter and MK Dons and the rest um, performance wise I think have been fairly good. We just probably haven't collected a points return that we we should have through the performances and that we that we needed to have um, at this stage. Yeah, it was a strange game Saturday. As you say, you started the game well and obviously the disallowed goal was a little bit of a blow and ordinarily you would you would sort of brush yourself off and, and, and crack on. Obviously, they score straight after, but the, the pace of the game seemed to slow and obviously MK have something to do with that. But um, but, but mentally, it seemed to, to affect the side a little. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I, th I think it's a bit of a story of the season so far. We, we haven't capitalised... Um, when we've had the momentum or where we've had the chances to get on top in games, um, we haven't capitalised on them moments and got the goals that we needed to have to have got more points out of games. Um, and then we've probably allowed the goals we've conceded to hit us harder than they have normally. And that's probably just a reflection of where we are um, in the table and at what stage of the season we're in now. I mean, in terms of, you know, obviously as the, as the, the, the season trudges on and there's obviously 10 games left now, you, you, you're probably finding that pressure going into each game now. How do you personally deal with that? Um, I think it's easier when you've been playing football um, longer than others. Um, I think the majority of our, of our dressing room have, have got quite good experience in terms of the number of games they've played um, in leagues. I think you just have to take each game um, at a time, it's easy to kind of look at the table or look at how many games left, but that makes no difference on a day-to-day, match-to-match basis. I think you have to just look at the next game, um, objectively think how you can put in a good performance and how you can get points from that from that game. And then as the weeks go by, hopefully you look to pick up enough enough points to, to get us out of the situation we're in at the moment. You, you, you mentioned the fact that you're, you're one of the, the, although you're only 28, James, of course, but in footballing terms, you're probably one of the older players within the squad and there are one or two younger ones that, uh, and we talked about this with, 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 with the manager a few moments ago, in terms of you know, some of the younger players perhaps having not gone through that experience. I was listening to a, an interview with uh, Dan Burnup at Newcastle and he was saying that there's a, almost like a leadership group of, of, of senior players that act as a sort of conduit from the manager to some of the other players. Do you, do you have that at the club? Um, I, would say, I would say we don't have a specific leadership group. I'd say we have um, a number of voices in our dressing room, a number of the older boys um, who probably relay um, information from the gaffer and communicate information from the gaffer to, to the squad on a regular basis. But I think it's important to have different, different voices um, within the group so that you're not always hearing, doesn't get too monotone, you're not always hearing the same voice. Um, so I say we don't have a specific leadership group, but we have a lot of voices, um, a lot of experienced heads in our group that relay messages and communicate information um, on a week-to-week -week basis with the boys to kind of just pass on the information and kind of drum in the information that we need. Yeah, in terms of yourself personally, James, your, your, your role has, has changed very slightly over the last sort of month to, to six weeks or so in playing a left wing back role as opposed to left midfield or, or out and out left back. How, how are you finding that role? Because it seems to suit you very well. Yeah, I enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's, that's been a debate over probably my whole career of where, where people want to play me. Um, people will play me anywhere from um, left back up to left wing. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been a debate that many, many people have had about my position. Um, I've always said I just enjoy being on the pitch. Um, I'm moody when I'm not on the pitch at home. I'm not moody with, with the players, I'm moody with my partner. Um, but I, I enjoy I enjoy 
I enjoy the left wing back role. I think it probably offers um, offers me the best of my capabilities um, and my attributes in terms of being able to get forward, um, having a license to get forward, and then also um, defending wise, having a bit but not having the sole responsibility because we've got a back three behind me. Um, so I, I think it has a lot of attributes, helps with, with a lot of my attributes, but. Um, I think regardless of what formation formation we play or we choose to play over the next 10 games, it's just about making sure that we put in the good performances that we have done recently um, and making sure we capitalise on the moments and the momentum that we have in these games coming up to make sure we get the, the points return um, that we deserve from some of the performances. Yeah, obviously, you know, the onus is on yourselves to... You know, to go out and score the goals and get the win on, on Saturday. One or two results went for you on, on Tuesday. And, uh, you know, personally, uh, are you someone that, that, that checks your phone when there's games going on elsewhere and you're looking for favours from one or two others and obviously Accrington and Morecambe losing on Tuesday? Um, I'm not. Some people probably are. Um, I'm probably watching the Champions League on a Tuesday rather than watching the League One results. <laughs> um, but I think, I think we're not at that stage yet. I think we're at a stage where... If we put in good performances um, and get points returns for ourselves, then we don't have to worry about other people's yet. Because I think if we put in enough good performances and enough good results, then we won't have to rely on others. Um, I think if it ever got to a stage where you do, then you probably do start to look at that. Um, but I think over the next kind of month, we've got an important number of games coming up that we should feel confident about picking up points as long as we put in good performances and capitalise on the moments.